and welcome to another exciting edition of my vlog. Now, um, I'm going to cover the Samoil supplementary material that Twin Perfect put out, put out for their uh, documentary. And right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you straight up, it doesn't look like I'm that angry. But there's a quiet anger, almost a rage because this is probably the worst video they put up. Hardly anything said in that video had anything to do with the occult. And the sources that they cited were just wrong. They, they, and the, the, then, then they cited the sources and the source, the correct sources that they cited were like they misconstrued the information off of it and I made this long rant when this video first came out on my I don't like the word hippie blog on tumblr but it's much better if I can show you and tell you Satan is nothing more than a title in Hebrew it means adversary anybody can be Satan so we don't know who the identity of that angel in the book of Job is. In the Zohar, which is the most important book of Jewish mysticism or Kabbalah, this angel is identified as Samuel. And that is where you get Samuel Satan. But the Christian Satan and the Jewish Satan are two totally different Satans. Uh, a lot of people would disagree that Samuel is not Satan and they can retort that really well they can dispute that completely well with academic sources because he mostly gained prominence in Christianity and Judaism Satan is not that important and I want to start off saying that and I can tell from this video that the people making it don't have an idea of what they're talking about and I'm gonna go along the lines of looking at my blog to know exactly because I, I typed up the blog when I was looking at the video like comparing them together side by side so every section I wrote was when I was writing it so it all stayed consistent I didn't forget anything because there's a lot of information to cover here and I'm not going to get into the history of Satan because the history of Satan is huge. The history of Samuel is not that big. But the history of Satan has been going on for centuries. The cult doesn't worship Alessa as God. If they worshipped Alessa as God, she wouldn't be made a saint. When was the last time you heard God become a saint? You haven't. Because God is not a saint. God is God. On top of that, the order is polytheistic, which means they worship multiple deities. They worship multiple gods. And this is most likely Owaku in inserting a little bit of Shintoism into the, this uh, part in Silent Hill. And it's mixed in with Catholicism. But it's also mixed in with stuff from Europe that comes from the occult, that comes from Christian and Jewish mysticism. And in Jewish mysticism is called Kabbalah. I know mostly about Kabbalah, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. But uh, nothing covered in here. I'm not at least the least bit, you know, I'm very knowledgeable about it. Okay. There is not a single document or source of evidence in any of the games where the cult said Alessa was God. The reason why God ended up looking like Alessa was because at the very end of the game, Claudia's thoughts were projected. And in Claudia's mind, God looked a lot like Alessa. If you see the paintings in the church, that conflict Dahlia's image of God. So we got that out of the way. The memo that they cited, they said, was written for cult members. This couldn't be further from the truth. A lot of the books that were mentioned in the prison cell, like the Feast of the Succubi 
and the fallen angels of favor and mercy in the in Silent Hill 2 in the prison cell those are real occult books you don't have to be part of the order to obtain them when there's a book that says the evolution and etymology of a religion etymology is an actual science if you, you can name one order member conclusively that you know as a scientist, you tell me because as far as it looks like in the Silent Hill game, absolutely no one in the order is a scientist. That was a book that was actually academic. If it wasn't, it wouldn't have the word etymology on it. And that's a part of anthropology. Etymology is like uh, the study of where words come from pretty much so and it had a picture of Alessa in it or the woman in white and it had a picture of the incubus in it um, that was a complete misunderstanding of the memo I know they don't have the background in checking their sources but trust me when a, a lay person or somebody who isn't a scientist or an anthropologist they're not going to write the word etymology in their work. Now I'm going to get on to the mark of Samuel the Metatron. The Metatron is the mark of Samuel. What Dolly has said was a red herring. When they say that went up into our, uh, to blah de blah 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 because Samuel and Metatron shared the same existence. That's not what Lost Memories is talking about. In fact, the passage might have little to do with the game. Because first off, the Scylla Metatron doesn't summon anything. So, it's not going to summon Satan. It's not going to summon Samal. It's not going to summon Metatron. It's a spell of annihilation. And it's a sigil. And sigils are a part of the occult. And they're not always used to summon demons. Sometimes the sigils are actually used to contain demons. Hence, you got the triangle within the triangle with Floros. Because in occult works, in real life, that is how you uh, contain Floros. And that's exactly what Dahlia did. But sigils can be used for other methods. And in this case, Alessa is trying to annihilate herself and God. As far as Metatron and Samal sharing the same existence, the Zoar also says that Lilith and Samal share the same existence, and this can refer to them both being Hermaphrodites. The Jewish mysticism doesn't, to my knowledge, I've never heard anybody say that Metatron turned into Samal. That doesn't even make any sense. That's not in Jewish mysticism. It's a, ugh, it's all metaphor. For first off. Metatron's been around a lot longer than Samal has. Uh, Metatron was in literature. He was in uh, the first book of Enoch. I believe it's the first book of Enoch. Which was one of the books that was taken out of the Bible. That was written contemporary with the Old Testament. And in this book, Enoch ascends to heaven and turns into Metatron. Samal doesn't appear in Judaism until much later. And he appears in mostly folk works and among certain groups of Jews, but not all of them. And he doesn't really gain any prominence until Europe and the medieval period, just like Lilith. And you're going to have to excuse my bird, because I don't know how to make my bird shut up. So, where they're getting this information, I want to know. Because it's not in the Zohar. I've read the Zohar, and I don't remember it ever saying that. And certainly in the older books, it doesn't ever say Metatron turns into Samuel, because Samuel's name wasn't even mentioned until way later. Uh, and, that, and those books were written in, in where Israel and stuff are. And Samuel's texts later on were written more uh, in Europe, among Jews there, when they, uh, they spread out. Nowhere in Silent Hill 1 does it ever imply that Samuel is God, or the God of the Order to be more specific. If you can find a text 
or a document or anything like that that proves that, I would like to see it because it's not in the game. Nothing. The creators don't state that. The game memos don't state that. None of the characters state that. Um, the third game doesn't state that. It is not stated. It's not implied. Sam Hall's name is hardly ever mentioned in there with God. And the memo that cited about etymology talks about how pose, opposing the people that oppose the order, they gave God demonic names like Satan, like Samuel, like Azazel, stuff like that. The peop it, if, if you play Silent Hill 3, there's a part in the game in which Heather, I believe, is talking to Vincent and she... He's talking about God, and she says, don't you mean devil? That's exactly what opposers do. The people that were in the cult gave God angelic names, like Metatron, and Sandalphon, and stuff like that. And when they gave God angelic names, shared characteristics of those angels appeared in God. Because God was originally a Native American deity, right? And a solar DT. Okay, we cover this. I think the the worst. I mean, okay, for, the soul of Metatron doesn't summon anything. It's a spell of annihilation, and the only reason it's ever called Metatron, and this is according to the memo on Silent Hill Three in the library. You can look where Vincent is in the church. I will specifically quote the memo. The magic square with strong protective and dispelling properties is called the Vruin Seventh Crest or the Scylla Metatron. It will bring results regardless of whether the target is good or evil. Its strength therefore places a high burden on the cast. So it's a neutral control. Spell. It's it is not usually used. This is why it bears the name Metatron, after the angel of Metatron, also known as the Ancient of God, because it's difficult to control. That doesn't mean it summons Metatron, and it doesn't mean it summons Samuel. Now, as far as incubuses go, an incubus is a dream demon, and they've been around since Mesopotamia. If you watched my Lilith video, you might have heard about them, because Lilith is partially the origins of some of them. In ancient Mesopotamia, in Sumer, and Babylonia, Assyria, and Akkadia, and places like that, and this is where the Jews got their myths from, there were demons that would come into people's dreams and give them wet dreams, and copulate with them, and then give birth to, like, spirit children, or demonic children. And they would be the blame for sleep paralysis when you would be paralyzed in your sleep they would be the blame for that and it'd also be the blame for wet dreams and things of that nature the explanation was that they were demons and Lilith was doing that in Mesopotamia before she was doing it in medieval Europe because later on she appears in medieval Europe as a succubus and it's a similar concept the incubus is the male version the succubus is the female version and sometimes they trade up gender in the medieval European folklore but in Mesopotamia there's Lulu the male incubus and Lily too who's the origins of love the female succubus and that's pretty much how it is Samal the only connection that Samal has to succubi and incubi is being married to Lilith he doesn't he's not an actual succubi or incubi because Succubi and incubi are spirits, and they're specifically evil spirits. They do harm. Uh, Samal is an archangel. It describes Samal as a seraphim, well, first off, a seraph or a seraphim are a class of angels that are the highest of the high. They, like, rank high. There's different species of angels, and they have different ranks. And um, you have the cherubs are right below that, which are the little uh, angelic beings like uh, you see Cupid and stuff like that they're more like Cupid and then you got the seraphs and the seraphs they uh, they have six wings and 
Archangel is higher than that. But the reason why this is important is because Samuel doesn't have six wings, he has twelve. And he's as important in the Zoar as Metatron is. And the only reason, according to this one treatise of left emanation, the only reason that he is considered evil by mankind uh, is because he is not, his nature is not sin, his nature is not evil, but he seeks to mingle with things that are not of his nature, which is why he would have married Lilith. Uh, he seeks to mingle with sin, and the whole symbolism behind that is that sin e equals death, and that Samuel is like the pyramid head in Silent Hill, he's an executioner for God. So, uh, So Samuel is attracted to sin because he kills people for it. And that's what his main function is, serving God. And that's one of the reasons why he's considered evil. But if you ever look in, I have the dictionary of angels, including the falling, fallen ones. It's also got plenty of, um, plenty of demons in there too. That was a very good book, and it's academic, and it says that Samuel resides in fifth heaven, and he dwells in seventh, and seventh heaven is the closest to God. Now, the only thing that I could tie Samuel and Metatron into is the Valtiel, because the Valtiel is called an angel of God like Metatron, and he ex but he's also said in Lost Memories to execute people like the pyramid head. His main reason for existence is actually to perform functions similar to the pyramid head. That him being an executioner is more like Samal. But him being called an angel of Metatron is the same terminology that Owaku used for Metatron. So you got that? Now. I didn't want to cover that much of the history of Satan. But Satan is an anonymous angel. And while the god, the Egyptian god Set, has some bearing on the Satan myth, they are not the same. A person that worships Set, and they have them, they're called Setness, are not the same thing as a Satanist. And a person that worships the devil isn't necessarily a Satanist. And somebody who's an Luciferian who worships Lucifer or deals with the more of the Lucifer side of things than the Satan side of things is not necessarily a Satan. Lucifer, the passage that mentions Lucifer and Isaiah is a mistrans well, not a mistranslation, it's a misinterpretation. The original says in Hebrew, Hillel ben Shahar or Hillel son of Shahar. They are two false Canaanite gods according to Isaiah. And they are used as a metaphor to describe this Babylonian king because the Hebrews were in Babylonian captivity at the time. That it's impossible for the Hebrews who wrote the Old Testament, having no contact with the Romans at the time, to know the word Lucifer. And because of some political tensions with people who were actually named Lucifer, the church used this to symbolize Satan and to say this is Satan. But Lucifer is also a minor deity in the Roman pantheon and has nothing to do with Satan. So there are Luciferians in the world that don't have anything to do with Satanism. And Michael Ford is a Luciferian. And he doesn't usually tag Satanist on there. He is, he is similar in the fact that he uses Lucifer as a symbol, but they worship gods like Hecate, the Greek witch goddess. And, uh, God, they like Eve and Lilith too, like Satanists do. Um, but he doesn't, I mean, he's not actual Satanist, he's a Luciferian. And when they used him in the, in the, in the video, I kept thinking, did they just get this off of Google? Because, I mean, like, when you talk about Satanism, you think about Ayrton LaVey. And they used the goat of Mendes is from the Church of Satan. But you got to remember some things. First of all, Michael Ford 
is a Luciferian and not a Satanist. And a lot of Luciferians don't consider Lucifer Satan, and I personally don't either, because if you look at the history, all it is is a poetic name for the Morning Star. And it's all, it only, Lucifer's only, he's solely to Christian mythology. You will not find him anywhere else. He is not in Judaism. Because it's a Latin name. I mean, God. Uh, he's not the end all be all. Michael Ford ain't the end all be all of Luciferianism. And good God, Anton LaVey is not the end all be all of Satanism. Satanism is extremely diverse. And not all people who worship Set, because some of them were not Satanists, there is a temple of Set that branched off from LaVey Satanism that was founded by LaVey's daughter. But I don't think they consider themselves Satanists either. Okay? They're not the same thing. They might be in the left-hand path, which is the path of, like, they're in, but they're not the same thing. The biggest problem I had was one of the biggest problems in the video was the fact that they tried to tie Satan and Baphomet into Freemasonry. And I just want to tell you, there is... Let me tell you about Baphomet. Let me tell you about the history of Baphomet. Baphomet is a huge occult symbol. I don't know a single occultist or Satanist, or even myself, that worships him as a god, or even considers him a demon, because he's a symbol. They have traced Baphomet's name, and it is assuredly a corruption of the word Muhammad. Baphomet comes from a perversion of Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad of Islam. It's gonna hurt my bird. <laughs> It, when, when there were accusations against the Knights of Templars, and part of this has to do with Freemasonry, um, they would use Baphomet as like this pagan god they worshipped. But Baphomet is not a pagan god, and he's not god. And there was somebody really famous who wrote... Um, about Baphomet and his name is Levy and he explains the symbolism of Baphomet um, the hand gestures are as below as above as below which is a big occult saying um, he, his one arm is female and the other one is male. And you see the androgyny later when you'll see, like, there are parts of Baphomet that have penises in them in certain pictures. And there's other parts of him that have boobs or both because he's supposed to be, like, a hermaphrodite. He's, and just, like, as above, as below, it's, like, uh, not duality but monism where you have two opposite forces but they're... Um, even though they're opposing forces and stuff, they share the same existence. I can go into what Levy wrote, but I'm not going to do that. But the idea of polarity is in there. And microism versus macroism. Um, it has to do with Kabbalah and stuff like that. It's got a bunch of symbolism in it. Okay? But is it Satan? No. It's not. It was used to describe, um, you know, to say it was Satan because back then they used to say pagan gods were all Satan. And so if the Knights of Templar were worshiping this, then they were technically worshiping Satan. And the thing about the goat, I, I want to add this, this the thing about goat is that uh, I believe there's a biblical passage, I don't remember quite where, where it says that you're not, you're supposed to be sheep you're not supposed to be like goats. So if you ever hear people calling people sheep and uh, quoting that, usually they don't always quote the goat part, but that's a part of Satanism. That's at least part of Levee Satanism, and it's a part of a lot of the cult. 
because goats will, when they disagree with something, they will butt their heads together or they will try to attack it or, you know, they come at you, they confront you. And sheep just do whatever they're told. Um, it also has fertility in life, which makes sense because it's got a phallus. And elemental forces, earth, fire, water, and air. It's all on there, on that famous picture above. And Levy completely said there were other people that mistook Baphomet for God. And I believe there, he wrote somewhere, Levy did, and I, I can't find it for the life of me, but he wrote this big long rant about how it's not God either. The reason why this image is used as the incubus in Silent Hill 1 is used as the image of God that Dolly herself had is because the game is using the symbolism to imply because Baphomet isn't God and it doesn't represent any pagan deity or Satan or anything but it's implying that the incubus is a false god. And in the original script, and, and I heard this from somebody who could read the original script, what, what happens is when they have the English voice actors, the original script, which is the text in Japanese that's shown on the bottom, it can, you can see it if you can play the Japanese version of the game. Whereas in Silent Hill 2 and 3, I think you can read the original script in the game because they have the options to turn it into Japanese if, you can, if you're fluent in Japanese. And sometimes the original script and the subtitles don't match up to what the characters are actually saying in English. And Silent Hill 1 suffered the worst. because I mean, obviously it did. It had horrible voice acting and really weird lines. And you got Dahlia running around like nothing can be gamed at random by floundering about. I mean, that was one of the funniest parts of the game. Uh, so you know there's going to be translation is issues. And from what I gather... The original script didn't have Alessa giving birth to God so much it had Alessa giving birth to the Son of God. Now, if you look at Silent Hill 1 and 3 and the cult's teachings and you add everything up, you will find that the Son of God, because remember, as a man and a woman that birthed God, is conveniently absent. And the reason... I mean, that reason alone should make you question if Alessa or Heather, well, in the case of Silent Hill 3 Claudia, ever birthed God. It should make you question that. Uh, because it's not made in the same way that, according to the mythology. It actually goes against the mythology. So. The original script from somebody who na named Bernie... Burning Man who used to post on like Silent Hill Heaven and Silent Hill Talk I haven't seen him all alive forever said he was fluent in Japanese and could read the original script and he said there was a lot of discrepancies between what they were saying and what was in the original script and what was in the original script was the Son of God part which I believe I heard a rumor was changed because it was sacrilegious and if they were bringing it over to America, I guess it would be sacrilegious because Son of God is used all the time to refer to Jesus and we're a Christian, Christian-dominated nation, you know. Uh, so they changed it to God, which apparently the Japanese designers must have agreed somewhat or they wouldn't have added that aspect in Silent Hill 3 in which the script does match more closely to what the characters are saying. And... So we came up with this hypothesis uh, on Silent Hill Talk, me and a user named Floodclaw. I think it was Floodclaw and somebody else. And we came up to the hypothesis based on a, a bunch of evidence, including the original script versus what they were saying and Baphomet that um, to explain away and to go into Silent Hill 3 without, you know, a big plot hole was that because I think in the play novel also says that if a saint has contact with an evil entity, God will be born. And if that's true, then you got Alessa who's a saint and the incubus touching her or having contact with her and then God is supposed to be born. Our theory was that Dahlia... 
originally intended to summon the Son of God and or something similar to impregnate Alessa because the Son of God has to be there the male aspect has to be there and later on Dahlia started mistaking for the Son of God for God and that would explain the incubus being a false god and the entire if you look in lost memories the entire eye of the night thing has to do with God being a false god So, the last thing is the Freemason thing, because the Baphomet Satan thing was used against Freemasons, and I actually dated a Freemason, but I also knew this before I dated him, that that's nothing more than a conspiracy theory that's been completely thoroughly debunked. I believe you can get all of Freemason information, all their rituals somewhere online, or any in any book, or, like, all their stuff is not, like, they do their rituals and stuff in private, but all, uh what they do and blah 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 has already been released by people who broke their oaths and stuff like that over the years and freemasonry does is like a brotherhood more of and it doesn't have anything to do with religion uh i mean it has a little bit to do with religion but you don't have to be my my ex-boyfriend was a pagan so you don't have to be a christian or anything um, to be in it and I believe the only thing he said was you had to acknowledge a higher power but you didn't necessarily have to acknowledge God so it really kind of made me mad and then they tied it with Harry Mason's name which is even more laugh laughable because the reason I'm, I don't know the Japanese reason why like the crater reason why Owaku or anybody um, I think it was Toyama too had Mason as the last name but the reason why people in Europe and European descended people like Americans, a lot of Caucasian Americans, uh, had names like Cutter and Mason was because they would have last names that were attributed to their job and their generational job. So Mason really comes from people, you know, his family line back in Europe used to do masonry. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, I want to make sure that I covered everything I, I believe I did because angels are now not incubi, succubi Satan uh, with a brief history Satan doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Lucifer or and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with Samuel either uh, uh, because the Christian Satan resembles hardly anything from Samuel so when you say the, when I looked at this video by the way I could see their Christian uh, programming coming out it was completely there because instead of looking at Samal from the point of view of a Kabbalah, the Jewish point of view, or from a different point of view uh, that wasn't Christian, they couldn't do that. And they got the left hand path wrong, Satanism wrong, Luciferianism wrong, Samal wrong. And Samuel's not necessarily a fallen angel, which if you go by the word demon academically, is defined as an evil spirit or a fallen angel and those are the two main ap uh, applications for the word demon uh, it's a very Christian thing because the the word demon actually meant a benevolent spirit or daemon in Greek mythology they or they could be good or evil something like that uh, it doesn't necessarily have to mean evil spirit but uh, Samuel isn't really a fallen angel at all I would like to see I've looked and looked for passage about that because I've heard several people say that and it just sounds like Christian programming because the Zohar says which is Zohar is biblical commentary that Samuel is the Satan of Job so they automatically attach all those ideas that they had from the church onto Satan and Judaism and Satan and Judaism does ha could have little to nothing to do and uh with my description of Samuel, I don't have a picture of Samuel. I have lots of pictures of Lucifer and stuff, and that comes from in Judaism, you're not supposed to depict anything from heaven. That includes God, Samuel, Metatron, you're not supposed to depict that stuff. So, you very, I, I couldn't find any ancient pictures of Samuel anyway, or medieval pictures for the life of me. But, uh, he is not hoofed, he is not he does not, he's not described as having a goat head. In the Zohar, he's described as looking like he's in his early 20s like Lilith does and Lilith looks like Eve and uh, she was and Lilith was created in the image of God at the same time as Adam and Adam was created in the image of God and 
They were both hermaphrodites because God is dual gender. God is both male and female. Uh, so Lilith and Adam were hermaphrodites too. And it says that Samuel was created in the image of Adam and was also a hermaphrodite once upon a time. So that means that Samuel looks like God. And he supposedly looks like a young man. And Lilith looks like a young woman. And they both look like God. And Adam and Eve look like God. So that's some food for thought, but it doesn't have anything to do with Silent Hill. So I hope you all like this video because I had to pull a lot to get into and I didn't want this video to be that long, but uh, I couldn't help it. I, I could not help watching Twin Perfect's video and then not getting a little bit like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> no. Alright.